The following podcast is a Scrum Inc. production. Welcome back to the Agile CEO, a podcast designed to deliver real-world stories of leaders, innovators, and risk-takers changing the way businesses operate. I'm your host, JJ Sutherland. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Dr. David Levine from Ariadne Labs, who is really working on revolutionizing healthcare delivered uh, across using different practices. He's featured in the 10th anniversary edition of Scrum, The Art of Doing Twice Work and Half the Time, uh, where he did a lot of work on hospital care at home. Uh, and so, David, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, JJ. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, great. Uh, and so uh, first, we need to start telling people a little bit about Ariane. It was founded by uh, Dr. Atul Gawande, who wrote The Checklist Manifesto, which is a really great book, which I highly recommend. I enjoyed reading. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Ariane and, and your role there? Absolutely. Ariane is a very special place. It is really a health innovation laboratory where we get to basically think outside the box. And we have a big way of thinking about testing things, designing them, testing them, and then scaling them. Um, that's really what drew me to the lab and to a lot of the tools work is the idea that we shouldn't just be keeping things in a journal article on a dusty shelf. Uh, otherwise, our academic work is kind of pointless. And we need to be looking at how can we scale that work um, across kind of millions and millions of lives. And so Ariadne is really good at designing something with human factors designers, with human-centered design, moving it to the test phase, sometimes in a randomized controlled trial, and then moving it across what we call the arc to uh -huh. uh, really the scaling phase uh, where we can see it happening in dozens, if not thousands, if not millions of, of places around the globe. So tell us a little bit about uh, hospital care at home, if I'm using the right term, and, uh, and what drew you to Scrum and Agile as you're developing it? Sure. Yeah. So. Uh, People say all sorts of different things. They say home hospital, hospital at home, acute hospital care at home. So yours, yours was great, JJ. But they essentially the idea is we are taking care of patients who traditionally would have been taken care of in a brick and mortar hospital. And instead of delivering that care in the brick and mortar hospital, we are taking those patients back home and delivering them all the hospital level services you'd expect to get at home instead of in the brick and mortar. So it's substitutive. And I know I'm emphasizing that like four times, but that's because most people, even doctors, don't get what home hospital is. They say, oh, it's home health care where we visit twice a week, or maybe it's home hospice, end of life care at home. And it is none of those things. It is all of the services you'd expect to get twice daily nursing visits, a physician or an advanced practice provider visit, advanced IV infusions at home, continuous monitoring at home, diagnostics at home, imaging at home, blood testing at home, even consult, consults at home. All the stuff you'd expect to get in the hospital, uh, we deliver it um, at home instead. Uh, and we've done this for about a decade to two decades in the United States. And we've done it for almost four decades across, across the world. One of the big reasons that I was very interested um, in bringing Scrum into some of our work here was because we have not been able to scale home hospital in the United States. Uh, there is a big opportunity here. And to me, it was all about, we are not organizing the work that we're doing correctly. Uh, we do that all the time in healthcare. I'm sure everyone who's been on your show has has told you that. Um, and that's that's why you all are in business and it's a good business. But, um, we, we think we're special, right, in healthcare and that we're, we're smart. We know how to organize ourselves. We know how to take care of patients. and. Sometimes I think we know how to take care of patients, but we definitely don't know how to organize ourselves appropriately to do work in an efficient manner. And so I see that as a huge opportunity for, for this movement, right? Everybody's been doing acute care at home. We talk about, we've done it for decades and decades. Well, well, friends, like let's do it smarter. Um, and let's actually start to like scale this across our country, for example. Uh, and so that was one of the, the big reasons that I, I actually wanted to use Agile and wanted to use Scrum uh, as we started out. So what impact, so uh, as I understand it, you were making knowledge products so that, you know, physicians and hospitals and payers could do this in ways that they didn't know how to do it before. That's right. What was the impact of Agile on that? Because you developed quite a few. Yeah. So we we created a an accelerator for home hospital and the object of the accelerator was to design what we called knowledge products for home hospital care. 
Knowledge products are broad terms. Basically, they were anything that would help a hospital or a health system uh, launch a home hospital program or maintain and sustain and grow a home hospital program. And so we use Scrum in kind of every single step to figure out, all right, which, which knowledge products are we going to design? Are we going to design a, a market review of remote patient monitoring devices for acute care at home? Are we going to design the workflow for admission uh, you know, from the emergency department to the home? Uh, are we going to design a rapid response workflow for a patient who's not doing well in the home? All sorts of options on the table. And so we really were able to design, we, we set the goal of making 20 uh, knowledge products. Uh, thanks to our Scrum methods, which we can get into, we, we really were able to do that far ahead of schedule. Um, basically, we did it in 20% less time than we had expected. Um, and we had, frankly, a lot of fun doing it. Everybody just kept remarking, like, wow, when I do this on my teams in the hospital, A, we're really slow like molasses, and, and B, we, we don't enjoy what we're doing. Uh, it's <laughs> slow, whereas it, like, this, was, this was fun, uh, and we worked so fast uh, together. And, and one of the beauties was we took, we took people who had never worked together, um, totally disparate hospital organizations who, who did not know one another, um, and we're able to use the principles of Scrum to really create some very fast thinking, fast working teams. Yeah, as my father often says, you know, if you aren't having fun, you're doing it wrong. That's right. <laughs> so tell me about your Scrum practices. How, how did you set it up and what, it, how, how, what did you do? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, and and you, you might end the show right now because we did not follow every Scrum practice. No, but I, <laughs> I've, been, I've been taught that that's actually okay. Uh, that is okay. And, and that, that is uh, okay. And, and, and let me tell you, for a while there, uh, some of our team members were, were very Scrum evangelists and were saying, no, we got to do it this way. Um, but but we realized we actually didn't have to do it uh, yeah. that way. And, and Scrum is all about really customizing it to the work effort um, and using the parts of it, you know, enough of the bedrock, but but using the parts of it yeah. that makes sense. And so in some ways, this wasn't a typical effort um, because oftentimes, right, Scrum is done on a team that's, that's, you know, a longitudinal team, right? This is a team that's going to be moving forward for quite some time. Um, and so we, we did not have that luxury. Uh, and so we basically took these disparate health systems, hospitals, um, and health entities, I should say. And basically every single set of sprints, we brought people who with technical expertise into the fore um, and asked them to join uh, on, on a team. Um, this was hard, right? People had not worked together before. They, right. did not, they did not understand the various scrum ceremonies and so on, right. uh, and did not understand the lingo. Um, but we basically created a, a a Scrum 101 that that people needed to watch really fast to understand <laughs> kind of what's a developer? What are you talking about that we're having a, a, a stand up meeting every single morning for 15 minutes? Um, what is this definition of done? Like I don't get these things, and so we had to really quickly teach people like the very very basics so that they could participate. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would we would essentially have folks dive in and solve for one of the items in our backlog. Um, and so we did have that team that was able to, with content expertise, create that those backlog items. But then we would bring a fresh team every single set of sprints to basically develop for that, that backlog item. And, and maybe that was a whole set of contracting experts because we were making a knowledge product that was how do you contract with a commercial entity to do home hospital um, maybe that was a right. bunch of it gurus because we needed to talk about all the smart on fire standards that were necessary to get an rpm technology to talk to an, an electronic health record right right so we would bring different content expertise and add them to the team each time which then helped us get through the typical scrum cycle uh, really really nicely and really really quickly so when, how long did it take for them to absorb, like you had this sort of, you know, quick hit of, you know, here's what all this, all these words mean. <laughs> how long yeah. did it take them to actually get up and running? Yeah. So I would say, you know, there were some, there were some leaders and some laggards, uh, but I would say in general, two days. Um, and we were, we were, you know, sprinting pretty quickly, usually each week. Um, and then we would sometimes do two week sprints. Um, but folks, Folks usually caught on by day two um, of what what the process was, when they needed to be where, um, uh -huh. how they needed to to help estimate things, um, and so on. And and there were there were some folks who was very hard for them, 
Um, and so, you know, we actually did a bunch of research on this and we asked people, you know, how well did, did you, did you learn this, the, the, the ways of scrum? How, how, what did you agree that your scrum team worked well together? You know, about 80% of people said that they, that they really, really had imbibed the, the ideas of scrum. It's interesting. 98% of people said their team works well together. So even if they didn't quite like, <laughs> if, even if that 20%, those laggards, said, right. oh, I don't know about this scrum thing, right. they still loved working on their team. Um, and, and they thought that their team prov- you know, produced a very high quality product. So um, there was a little cognitive <laughs> deviance, there, but, um, but I would say the vast majority really caught on by day two with kind of what, what they needed to do when they needed to do it. Yeah, I was just talking to someone, one of our clients, the way the big sort of scrum implementation there. This one was sort of doing, this, hey, doing things, surveys and doing interviews, like, how did it work? You've been doing it for about six months now. How's it going? And she's like, well, I hate scrum, but now I know the other people in different silos and I can get stuff done so much faster. <laughs> but I hate the scrum thing. And I was like, I'll take that. I'll take, yeah. you know, I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. So, but was it hard? Kind of <laughs> was it hard with, I would think, you know, with doctors and in medicine, I mean, there's so much regulation, I mean, for good reason, mm-hmm. um, you know, people's lives are at stake and there's you know, lots of laws of privacy, all that kind of stuff. How did you incorporate that kind of, you know, regulatory rigor and, you know, medical practice rigor? Yeah. You know, it, it really varied by knowledge product, right? If it was a clinical knowledge product, then we really wanted to be sure we were employing that stuff. And to give you an example, we would make sprints that did simulations. So we would have, you know, let's say we spent two sprints building a workflow for how to rapidly respond to a patient who's not doing well at home. Okay, well, that's great. You put it on paper. It looks pretty. It's got all these nice arrows and a human factors design engineer worked with you, but does it actually work? Um, And so then we would sprint on uh, essentially simulation. Um, You know, one could argue we could have taken simulation to an even even better degree, we mostly went to what I would call medium fidelity simulation, where uh-huh. folks were acting, uh, you know, in right. the acting role. It was beyond just the tabletop kind of low fidelity simulation stuff. Mm-hmm. We did not go to high fidelity inside of these inside of these sprints, where you know we're renting out an, an Airbnb and 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 you know doing the whole thing. But right. um, we did use we did use Scrum to essentially help us plan how to how to do simulation in order to test that some of these clinical knowledge products were up to snuff. Um, and then in some of the other areas, you know, really, we were just, we were really, really focusing on making sure that our definition of done was up to par, right? Like right. we needed to make sure that it would pass muster with a clinical audience. Um, and right. that was important to have the right, right stakeholders in the room for that. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot different than if you're doing like, you know, making a music streaming service, the, the cost of error, is a lot lower. This is, yeah, this is always the case. People always kind of hem and haw at healthcare and say, why are you all so backward? Why are you all so slow? I think we're backward and slow, but but there's a reason for a lot of it, right? And that's because, you know, I took an oath to do no harm. And, right. and so even though some of our practices today do harm, we, we have to we have to change very slowly and make sure that we do no harm when we do it. And I do think that Scrum helped us put a lot of the checks on our process. Yeah. That oftentimes- we, we kind of forget about sometimes when we build new things in healthcare. And so this allowed us to, you know, we had to present this thing to a whole group of stakeholders um, yeah, right. and, and they had to tell us it was, it was okay to go. Um, and so that, that's a big check that frankly, we don't, we don't often have that check appropriately in some of our work in healthcare. Um, and this, this really allowed us to, to find that, I think that sweet spot essentially mm-hmm. where, um, you know, it wasn't overburdensome what we had to, to require of the process, but it, it really put in place a lot of important checks, I think, and, and did did catch things that were like clinically inappropriate. Really, we, we fixed them, and we had to put yeah. them back through another sprint, for example. Um, and so, I think that was I think that was helpful. Now, you know, as, as you say, healthcare is a traditional industry. It has a lot of rules and history. And did you have skeptics from that trying to introduce a new way of working into that kind of environment? Oh, of course. Yeah, you know the answer to that question. Uh, the, the, uh, again, well, folks, convinced, but folks yeah, stuff. folks came, folks came to us, and we're just like, this is crazy. Like, what, what all are you trying to get us to do here? Um, and then, as soon as they saw how fast we were working together, 
it was just, it was a night and day experience and they just kept remarking. We did some great qualitative evaluations of, of the experience and they, they just said, wow, like this team works so much faster than any healthcare team I've ever been on. Um, and it's, and it's not even their people. Right. They, they, didn't, right. they didn't know anyone else on the team, basically. Maybe one other person came from their own institution. Um, but we had we had 18 different healthcare entities participating in this accelerator. And so oftentimes there were people who you know did not know each other. Hilariously, sometimes they were in the same city and they didn't know each other and they were competitors almost in the health right. world. But so it took it took again for that probably that 20 percent of laggards it, it definitely was i think harder for them to recognize the benefit even if they read mm-hmm. everything very highly after yeah. it. um but folks i think folks were excited to try something new right nobody had ever done any sort of agile process before and i think folks were willing to go out on a limb to try something new to, to make some headway in a pretty efficient way so what you know, were there any surprises for you as you were doing this and the, doing these new methods? What 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 sort of made you go, huh? Yeah, I, I think one of the one of the biggest surprises was that the the ability for us to work together. We did this completely remotely, um, so that was another kind of yeah. atypical aspect uh, right. to our scrum teams. Not not that there aren't fully. Yeah, there are plenty that do that, but yeah, but it's not. I wouldn't say it's the orthodox way. Um, no, so. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, one of the surprises actually was, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but it was despite where we are with technology and collaboration tools, um, oftentimes technology did pose a collaboration dilemma for us. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, to give you a small example, right, uh, Dropbox. Well, if you want to be able to use Dropbox, guess what? And about half of our institutions, it's blacklisted. You can't use Dropbox. <laughs> so people had to get on their personal computers on a hotspot network in order to collaborate type of thing. Wow. Um, you know, OneDrive, same thing. I, I'm not just picking on one entity, but the ability for us to share knowledge in a fast way mm-hmm. um, w- was 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 a surprise. Um, we, we literally at one point, JJ, with a certain group, because of their data access restrictions, we ended up going back and just basically sending hundreds of emails, um, you know, in a very right. backward way, you know, oh, I can't use Miro. Oh, I can't get on this. Oh, I don't have access to that. And that's the kind of stuff that would have really dragged us down if we were not able to quickly kind of iterate around that. You know, we had built almost everything around Miro. We had wanted right. to, people to be collaborating in Miro. That's a good tool. Yeah. I, I used you know, not, 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 not the best tool, but a great tool. Yeah. And it, it was a non-starter for some healthcare systems. Like they couldn't get access to it, for example. And so it was just really surprising, I think, to see how I, I feel like we should have had the technology and should have had the ability to do it. Um, but it, it was hampered uh, in many respects, whether it was security issues, compatibility issues, some some people's tech literacy um, was was a surprise. Yeah, that's interesting. So what has been the impact of that work? You, you developed these you know, knowledge products. What's, what's uh, happened with those? Yeah. So, you know, I think this is, this is one of our first accelerators that we've done in this way. And I look forward to kind of making, making more and making them better mm-hmm. and different. Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways uh, from the work, and, and we've published <clears> this uh, recently in, in the peer-reviewed literature, is that folks um, are, are actually still using these things, uh, still using these products. So, you know, two thirds of the participating organizations um, were using them at three months and and continued using them at one year. Um, you know, that's that's how long we kind of followed yeah. up for in one of our studies, uh, which frankly most people don't have data on. Um, right. and, and so th- I think that's a, that's a really really great finding, right? And a really durable finding that these were things that were made kind of by the people for the people, um, uh-huh. and, they're, and they're still using them. Um, you know, over a year later. They are still driving kind of clinical impact. They are still, essentially, in some ways, they're they're still very very resilient uh, to all the changes that we see around them. Um, and so that's one of, that's one of the best parts, I think, that we were able to show that this system really did design um, a product that is is that is helpful into the future for for teams. Well, that must feel good. That must feel really good. It's fun. It's fun. Um, and I think it's you know again we could have done a, a whole study on this, JJ, but we could have taken and tried to run an accelerator without Scrum, 
um, yeah, yeah, and, and seeing what, what, I'm, I'm what in, that, let's do it. What that accelerator makes, um, uh, as opposed to, you know, and trust me, from an implementation science perspective, my researcher had on, I would love to do those kinds of experiments. You know, let's take the various different kinds of right, organizational yeah. systems that, and test them against one another and, and kind of see that would be awesome. if they're pro or con. Yeah, I think it's an important experiment to do that, that we haven't done. Um, well, sign me up. I'm in. <laughs> I, I love that. I, I would say the vast majority of, of folks in, in your field would not be interested in doing that because it might make them look bad. Um, you know, I always call myself a radical pragmatist. You know, whatever <laughs> works. And you know, if something works better than Scrum, let's do that instead. You know, yeah. that's the entire point. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Um, but I think the durability of, of a bunch of these products has has been one of the best parts of it because um, I haven't seen a lot of work that is able to continue on into the future and be useful like that, that's developed so quickly. That that's the mm -hmm. that's the thing, right? Like we made these things fast um, and well ahead of schedule, um, which was which is which is pretty phenomenal. So have you started using agile practices in some of your other work beyond this project? We have, yeah, we have. Uh, you know, it's it's <clears throat> been interesting to see where our team is willing and not willing uh, to do mm -hmm. it. Um I'll be. I'll. I'll just be honest. We we are yeah, not fully a fully you know scrum scrumified team right now. Uh -huh. um, we 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 basically use Scrum inside of specific projects. Right. right. Now. Um. And we will kind of create backlogs. We will assign a Scrum master. Um. And we'll and we'll kind of uh, basically set in motion sprints on very mm -hmm. specific topics. I think our team is still learning to essentially organize all of ourselves around Scrum. Right. <laughs> um, that's something that's something we're still learning to do. Uh, and but we we do employ um, Scrum on very kind of specific projects uh, in kind of almost like a pinpoint surgical way. Right. Do, have you seen the same kind of speed uh, when you do that? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, it just gets down to the concept of if you give yourself an organizational method um, people operate more efficiently and more impactfully and with more joy um, versus uh, when you all set a deadline in a month from now and expect the the paper to be done. Um, right. it's uh, It doesn't happen as well. And I mean, to give you a specific example, we actually, we wrote both of the papers about the accelerator using Scrum. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> it, was, it was the first, it was the first time we'd ever done it. We, we all uh -huh. said, should we, should we try this? Because Again, this is a little stuffy academia, but it is it's a it's a pain to write a paper, uh, an academic peer review. Right. Oh, and it's usually it's usually a, a one person show, right? That you expect everybody, everybody, the primary author to just write the whole thing. It's slow, it's cumbersome. Um, you know, then you send it to your co-authors for revisions and critical feedback, and then you send it to the publisher. It's like this very old-fashioned way of writing. And right. we said, well, what if we tried to do use Scrum for it uh, and create kind of a backlog of different things we need for the paper? Um, we actually wrote both the papers using that methodology. Um, it was so fascinating because people enjoyed writing the paper and they actually felt like they collaborated on writing the paper, which is uh -huh. frankly never happens in, 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 in boring academic papers. It's really it's just kind of a one person writes the thing and everybody else gives feedback later. Um, and we actually all collaborated on the paper instead. I will say, and it was it was the first two times we'd ever done it. I actually don't know of other people that have written papers uh -huh. using Scrum. Um, maybe you all wrote your book using Scrum, but oh, I, I, I did. Yeah, good, but, but good. Not, I would not expect so. Paper. <laughs> I would expect so, but you know, I'm not sure it was it was faster. Again, it's the first two times we've done it. Yeah, we get yeah. to do it more. Um, but it was a totally different experience. And our whole team remarked on that. They're like, wow, like we actually wrote this thing together. Um, you know, we're all co-authors for a reason. Um, it was, it was just very lovely, very lovely. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, so, uh, Dr. David Levine is from Ariandi Labs. Uh, one of the great institutions that I really appreciate the work you've done and the, the work you are doing, uh, to help people, you know, get better. Thanks, David. Thanks, JJ. Great to talk with you. The Agile CEO is brought to you by Scrum Inc. In today's fast-paced world, adaptability is key. Our expert consulting services tailor transformations that drive measurable success, creating resilient, high-performing organizations. Whether you're leading a team, managing an organization, or guiding enterprise-level change, we're here to support your journey transform with confidence and achieve the outcomes that matter.
Learn more at scruminc.com.